Okay, morning brothers and sisters. We're here to do a quick video. Um, I was in looking at wisdom a few days ago. I read the four chapters, read through the four chapters. I don't think it's going to be hard to do a video on these four chapters because it's a real great summary on what we've been looking at on this channel over the last five years. Um, so it's a great it's a great opportunity to summarize everything. If I'd have just looked at these four chapters in the very beginning. <laughs> Um, anyway, it should be a lot of fun, I think. Um, but we're going to look at a slightly different topic today. Of course, it's all interwoven. We know this. We're going to find it in Titus 3.5. And we're going to look at some cross-references. We're going to look at the words in t Titus as well. And uh, where my thoughts went with some of um, at least these verses. Um, so, new international version, Titus 3.5. It says he, we know it's she. She saved us not because of righteous things we had done. Okay, so righteousness has absolutely nothing to do with it. But because of his mercy. They, they're, they're trying to substitute blood here. They want you to think blood. It doesn't say that. But because of, it, they, we know they stuck the he pronoun because the Old Testament proved it was the daughter's Zion that was re, the rejected cornerstone and her law which is where your righteousness is found. It's also considered the washing. Now, we've identified that in the Old Testament through hard study. Um, there's something else I want to explain. There's some of my older videos getting a lot of hits on them, and what I mean by a lot of hits is it's coming up as uh, one of my top three with like 10 views on them. Uh, and so that's what I mean by a lot of hits for me. Um, but... It's when I'm use, still using Christ, Christ, Christ. Now you understand in this climb, as you climb, and it's wisdom taking you through that climb, what we mean by climb, climb in our understanding. And you have to, it's the same way as climbing a mountain. You have to do that in slow progression. You can't do it all at once. It has to be in slow progression as you go up higher and higher. We know this. So for us to have been on this journey, those of us who have decided to take those first steps and have continued on in those steps, we're at the top of this mountain, and you can try to explain it to somebody who is still steeped in idolatry, and it's going to sound like utter foolishness, the things that you have found and discovered and know, for a fact. Because for some reason, the Spirit chooses you out and allows you to understand things that these people who are still stuck in idolatry down at the feet of an idol just can't be bothered with, right? So when you try to explain those that step that that's got you to this point where you know that Jesus is an idol, he's absolutely the idol that they have used to put the harlot spirit, right, in the land, which is identified as a feminine. And it's identified as a feminine for the women and down at the feet of a male idol and husband as your head. Now we can't, we've gone through all of these steps. So I'm not going to take you through them because it's just going to sound like foolishness to those who are still there. You have to take the first step. You do. Nobody else can do that for you. And that means opening your ear to listen, right? Only a fool will disregard all things, you know, and not even give it a lesson, which is really what idolatry has caused most to do. They've just closed their ears to listening, and they certainly have closed their eyes to seeing what stands right in front of them, what is going on in this world. Um, they won't even give that a look, because we know that they have fell into that ditch. They have fell into the snare that was laid. And this is going to take us to the snare. Uh, so we're going to investigate that for those who have been on this journey. But again, some of the older videos that are being watched, I speak of Christ, okay? Because in this journey, we have come to realize who the true Messiah was that was denied. If you want to say Messiah, uh, but we'll say the anointed one or the one that was placed in the sovereign position. And that sovereign was identified as female in the Old Testament with the law upon her hug a tongue that had came from heaven to give mankind the laws of heaven that we, he was to live by. So here we get them saying, not because of righteousness. Okay, so because of your wickedness? <laughs> of course it's because of your righteousness. It's because of you willing to follow the way of God. And 
they want to stick blood in there. And it's not identified as blood in any sense of it, in the old or in the new, other than where they wrote over, you know, and put their law in play. But once you understand the washing, which we identified in Isaiah 55, God says, you're free to come, take of my water. It does not say blood. Buy has the idea to believe. It doesn't mean purchasing power. It means to believe the truth. And we who have been on this journey, we have discovered the truth through wisdom's leading. She has taught us the truth. So let's read it again. Sorry, I babble. <laughs> Titus 3.5. She saved us not because of righteous things we had done, of course not, but because of her mercy. She saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's keep going on here in some of these cross-references before we look some of these words up. Um, it says here in Ezekiel, we're going we're gonna to spot. Ezekiel 36, 25, just pick a few out. I will also sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. And I will cleanse you from all of your impurities and all of your idols. What did God say not to make? You are to make no thing, no idol, neither male nor female, or any animals, and place them before you. You saw no image, make no image of me. And we've got a male idol standing in the land. So God says in Ezekiel 36, 25, I will also sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your impurities and from all of your idols. All of them. Male, female. Jesus is an idol and his name is Baal. And we get the verse in Jeremiah, I wrote it under one of my last three or four videos on both channels, I don't know which one, that he thinks, the king of Babylon thinks he's inaccessible, you cannot touch him. And you know why? Because the head is Jesus, that's why. That He's inaccessible, nobody's going to touch him, nobody's going to touch this man Jesus, nobody. He's so inaccessible. No one can reach why he's where he is, right? And what does it say to the harlot of Babylon? I will destroy your idol of Bel. What's Bel? Husband, bridegroom, Lord, master. You think that ain't the king of Babylon? You think the number 666 don't take us straight back to King Solomon, who coveted her position of power? Who went up to the high places and made himself really a harlot? Let's examine this a minute. King Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and they want to say, she played the harlot? He played the harlot. When he walled up the breaches of the rightful key of David, which was the daughters of Israel, who flowed like a living water. Yeah. Through the so-called breaches in the wall, the King Solomon had walled up and then established a harlot spirit, the key of Solomon. And that number 666 takes you straight back to the King Solomon one time, Old Testament. And it's telling you the situation or the kingdom that he was establishing at that time. That was a harlot spirit exalted in his heart. Yeah, because he was the one playing the harlot. And so let those that are wise, those with ears opened, listening for the truth, seeking it, those with opened eyes, instead of not those bowed down at the feet of an idol going, I have faith, faith, faith. You do not have faith. You have an idol. And if you bother to open your ears to listen for five minutes or your eyes, we've already done the hard work for you. The reasoning is already there. You've got to decide whether you're going to listen or not to it. So she saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of her mercy. She saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. The truth. So when we go down a little bit further, what does it say? Do not be conformed to this world. Romans 12, 2. 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Start thinking, start reasoning, start looking, start opening your ears. Then you will be able to test and approve what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Yes. Well, the perfect will of God is not a he, he, he. You bring all of that back upon your head, girls. When you put a man in charge of the kingdom and you go along with that entire lot, you can't see with your own eyes what that has done. You don't understand why your mother placed a boundary in Job. I will stay your proud waves. They will come no further with your contamination of idol worship of man as God. And I'm going to let you into my kingdom to destroy it. Look what you've done to your own. You can't stand up for your own house. You can't stand up for your own children. I'm going to let you come in and contaminate my heavens with your religious lie on your tongue, man as God. He, 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 you can't see what he, he, he has done to your kingdom. It's full of bloodshed. It's full of hatred. It's full of yoking the woman who was the scepter that I ruled through the righteous daughter, not the harlot spirit. I rule through righteousness, my daughters, and my law was the law that created righteousness in the land. Now you're telling me here, it's not through righteousness, but because of his mercy, they're leading your mind to bloodshed. Now we discovered there's two covenants here, which causes the admixture of doctrine on the table again. This is where it took me to. All right, so we're going to look at this again. Uh, we were looking at... Ephesians 5, 26, 2, um, that you might be sanctified and cleansed it was with the washing of water by the word. Now it states it straight out water. It does not say blood. And it does not say his blood is like water. It does not. Blood is blood. Go try washing in it. You're going to be stained in it. And God considers that absolute sin. You have blood on your hands. When you bow down to an idol and wash in that bloodshed and the law that came from that, from that covenant, which we're shown there's two covenant, and then it admixtures as that wine on the table that you get drunk on, you go to sleep. God winks at that ignorance. Right, she winks at it. She's willing to forgive it and renew you through the washing and rebirth of a new spirit. Who can birth you with a new body? Once you have this new spirit within you, she will provide you with the new body. Now, like I said, when you're in this climb and you're finally at the top and you understand some things where all those steps have led you to, and you understand what all the end looks like, you cannot tell it to those in the beginning because it's just going to sound like utter foolishness to them because they're still bad down at the feet of an idol washed in blood. Well, again, stained in it. They're not washed in it. But God says, come to me, come to my waters freely, believe freely, all right? And you are free to take of the good things of heaven. I will show you the truth as you take those steps. And Isaiah 4, 4, I wash the blood off of my daughters. You come to me sta stained in blood. You come to me. Building his house up, and you're not building your own up. You're not defending it, which is what you're supposed to do. So Psalm 51.10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, we're also warned you cannot enter into, um, where is it? Unless you be born of the water and the spirit, you cannot enter into God's heaven. Where is it? Um, I got the verse up here somewhere. Right here. John 3, 5. Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of water and the spirit. It does not say blood. It does not say blood. You can say blood, blood, blood all you want. Blood does not wash you. It stains you in a wicked covenant, which we identified. There's two covenants in view. We get uh, the Genesis 15, 9 covenant. This was in the last two videos I spoke on. I'll briefly say it again here. 
that Genesis 59 covenant has five animals in view. The first three, which was a heifer, a she-goat, and a ram, was to be cleaved in the midst. Each was to be set to one side, the right and the left, okay? Then you have a turtle dove, which is feminine, and a pigeon, which is masculine. They were not to be cleaved or touched in any way. One was to be placed to one side and the other to the other side. Now that is identifying your two covenants, one of bloodshed and one of water. And the spirit parts that, that's what that was showing you when that furnace of anger was walking through the midst. But it was also the spirit of God walking through there. The word of God will part the admixture of doctrine, your Red Sea as well. But we get a male covenant, we get a female covenant is what you're getting in view. The female covenant was one of water, which was denied. The males decided they were going to create their own covenant, a covenant of blood. And after the spirit parted that ad mixture, she says in, I think it's one of the Psalms, the, ad, the, wa the waters come over and covered over my steps so you did not see my pathway. So we end up with an ad mixture of wine on the table that you drink. So this verse actually took me to that understanding. It, it actually took me to Psalm 60, and I'm not going to go there. But thou hast shown thy people, daughters, hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Why is it a wine of astonishment? And we looked at this in one of the videos. I don't remember which one it is. If I could find it, I would post it underneath this video. But it was the daughters that were drinking, forced to drink this wine of astonishment. When they began to build his house up, they had no idea how, what bitterness was going to come out of that law upon her and yoke her under his religious lies and laws, which is exactly what it's done. It's caused bitterness. Mara. Ruth says, Naomi call, says, call me not. Naomi, call me Ruth, which also happens to be my name. Um, call me bitterness. The bitterness has come upon the woman. From the law of man-made religion. God is, man is God in your head. And he'll tell you what to do. Really? That ain't bitterness in the law and what it's led to? He stole your children from you. And we're told more are the children of the desolate spirit than of she who has a husband. Well, she who has a husband in that verse was Baal herself. It's another name for a woman who will simply do and become everything that hubby wants her to be and do. Right to the extreme of handing over her own vineyard to his lies. Her own children taught a religious lie. And she becomes the desolate spirit in the land that no child is hearkening to the spirit of her covenant and law. You see? So we get this twofold covenant that gets parted in the midst and out of the land of Egypt, the land of idolatry, where the idol of your bull God comes from, which then turns into a man, Baal, standing as your Lord and God in your head. So we discovered all of that. So she was forced to drink the wine of astonishment. Once she began to build him up, then she realized how much power she had gave to him by building him up. And he began to write laws and yoke and yoke and put them on her neck and force her to wear laws that he never could carry. Which then also becomes then a great burden upon her to have to deliver her children out through. And that is on her. And that's why we keep getting this rebirth, renewal. It's her responsibility. Which takes us to why now do I see every man standing around with his hands on his hips as if he can give life. Right? They'll say... Peace, peace, when there really is no peace in the law. It's all designed for him to build him up with his harlots bowed down at his feet, building him up, saying, well, I'm not allowed to have rights. He's my head. Mother says, how can I take your part when you won't even stand up for yourself in your own house? You won't even protect and defend your own children. You're handing them over to a religious law and law system, his which is nothing but bloodshed against you and your children, is your breakdown. So Romans 11, 9 also come up in my line of thought to what's on the table 
right? And it's got David, it's the daughter Zion speaking here. Uh, when they began to turn from her, and this admixture began to appear on her table, wisdom's table, um, is a new one that begins to factor in. And once your understanding begins to grow and grow and grow, you begin to understand why wisdom then is seen as having the admixture. Come drink of my wine on the table. So it is a wine. It absolutely is a wine. Because she says, may their table become a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a retribution for them. This is what you want. You want the admixture of lies on your table. You want to get drunk on them. And you went to sleep in them. That's right. In this religious life, Baal is God, your head. And you bow like a harlot to that. This is the covenant that will be disannulled. This is also the um, insurrection that is spoken of, the apostate. And it's feminine for a reason because these women are calling out to the God of heaven, the true God of heaven, saying, this is not the covenant that we agreed to. This current marriage covenant that has me under his head and his lies. And his heart exalts a harlot and debases me in a marriage covenant that was never meant to be. He was to hearken to her oath, her covenant, which was her religious uh, not a religious, but her law system that was denied from the very beginning. And uh, it was a gently flowing law. But she says, may their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Because that's what they wanted. And Habakkuk 2, 15, 16, we see him putting the wine to her lips, getting her drunk so he could expose her nakedness, make her play his harlot. Let her eyes look upon Zion. Let her be defiled. Zion has the idea of her branch that she rules through. And she turns on that branch and she says, Hey, boys, I'm not ruling through no harlot spirit that bows to you as if you're Lord and God. You do not take my purpose away from my daughters and from myself. I am the ruler of the heavens and I am the God that laid them out with my children. No man can do that. Why now do I see every man standing around with his hands on his hips as if he can give life? Those planets out there full of life at one point, they all came from our mother. I reflect my mother image in the Godhead. I do not reflect my father. And my father did not give life to me. It was my mother. Now, it says you denied your creator in the days of your youth, and you turned everything upside down. You said father gave life. You turned it upside down. It's mother that gives life. You are without excuse not to understand the Godhead. I manifested it in what I created. It's male and female. My daughters are made in my image. And then you try to tell me I'm going to rule through a harlot that bows to daddy as if he's God and gave life? I'll turn my back on you and you'll see what your latter end will be when you are forced to drink the wine of astonishment. And you did. You drank it down and you went to sleep in the religious lie. We discussed Romans 11. God has reserved to herself 7,000 that has not bowed the knee to Baal, the image of husband as Lord and God, which is also the same head in Babylon, King Babylon. He thinks he's inaccessibly high. Nobody can touch him because Jesus is so well loved in the land. Uh, Allah uh, is so well loved in the land. We go on and on with all these male gods. That's why it's called a harlot spirit. A harlot spirit is what bows to an image. And you are bowed down to a male image, which you see identified in Daniel too. So then if we go to... Um, yeah, there's a verse that links us to this passage here. So daughter's alliance says, may their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution unto them. We get wisdom setting her table in Proverbs 9, right? And they say, why? Well, she says, just remember, I can set the table the way that I choose. And if you turn away, from my laws, from my daughters, then you will get exactly what you want back upon your own head. 
if you can't see what male rulership looks like, and then you're going to another heaven ruled by three males. We're talking about Christianity here because this is what I was raised in. And you think it's going to be so much better. Well, you haven't learned your lesson very well, have you? You denied your creator, your maker, in the days of your youth. You daughters did. You sons did. And you turned everything upside down. And you told the potter she had no power over her own creation. She creates life out there. The builders will take from the trees and they will create a building and think how great they are. You couldn't make nothing because mother made the trees, number one. Not you. You could do nothing without her. Nothing. And we're going to look at that in wisdom. She says, you gave my name to another. You tagged it on to another. I don't share my title with anyone. I am mother and I am creator. I am the maker and I am the potter. You told the potter that she had no power over her own clay. That she forms in her womb. Just like you told my daughters in the earth that they had no power over the law that would rule those children. Yeah, you let him take your rights from you. And when you build your hubby up like he's God in the land, you will be forced to drink the wine of astonishment when you see what he will do to you. And it leads to bloodshed. That's why you get the pigeon on the side of blood. The daughters was the side of the water that was rejected. They were also the cornerstone denied in the very beginning. The foundation stone denied. But that cornerstone leads straight to the top once again. And she says, I will choose you out again to her daughters. And she says, I will rebuild you again. You will be rebuilt in the land as my government, as my scepter that I rule through because I will not rule through a harlot or you will be destroyed. So let their table become a snare trap and a stumbling block and a retribution unto them. So this took me to another thought. Uh, oh, great. I have a word pulled up instead. So let me see if I have the word. Okay, we'll look for it. It's not that one. It's not that one. If I have it here, it's not that one. Okay, so I'm going to read what I wrote down because I don't have it pulled up here. But it's in Isaiah 65, 10. And it links us to this idea of the table and the trap and the snare that gets laid, which is the admixture of wine on the table. We also see the Lord 136, which is the same head that was burned to ashes that the congregation of women, her assembly of women, her congregation around this head, 136, daughter Zion's number, as the dove that is burned to ashes in Psalm 68. This is the same congregation that met on the North Mountain that would have been the house in the forest of Lebanon that would have been identified as the woman's temple that they refused to build up. We see actually King Solomon preparing to tear it down. Um, so we've discussed this. I'm not going to go into great detail because we have so many videos up now on the house in the forest of Lebanon. That was where the government of God met. They attacked the daughters and it was King Solomon uh, in, in um, a great... Um, in a great overthrow is how you really have to see it when you get the story straightened out. And he really targeted putting himself in the position of uh, this Lord house, this, this um, Lord's seat throne in the house of Lebanon. And that was entire. So that is why Ezekiel 28 becomes so important in our study. And of course, we identified who was wiser than Daniel. And there was only one man identified as wiser than Daniel. And that would have been King Solomon. He's called the prince there. So we know that the king that comes in view after the prince is identified in Ezekiel 28 cannot be King David. It cannot. It's got to be the queen mother that was advising him because it was only the she's that walked up and down on the stair of heaven, on the stairs up and down. Um, we identified all that. I can... I can go into great detail, but it, it would take a great deal of time to explain it all. And we can hit the verses where we need to hit them 
because that is your little book of truth sealed up at the end of days. You are not to be found bound to male or female. You were to be hearkening to the law of God, which came off the daughters, which I'm starting to see a term that I never knew, which was um, Bath Cole, the daughter of the voice. Now, when I get reading Wikipedia, the man goes, well, you know, a woman talking to God was just really, it wasn't that special type is your idea, like all men loves to say, that, you know, truly when God spoke to man, it was so different. It was so epic, you know, but when God spoke to the daughter, it was, you know, blow it off like it's nothing. It's no big deal. And yet she is the daughter of the oath in the way that God did speak to mankind. It was through the daughters. It was. It was not through a man. It was never through a man. But you denied that in the beginning. And then you've got a world of bloodshed built on this Ed mixture that you drink off the table if you're in religion. You drink that wine off the table. And it says, the Lord 136 that was burned to ashes as the dove. Circled by her congregation of women in Psalm 68. And she was the Lord that came from Mount Sinai. She was really mad. She was letting them have their way, though. You build, a, you you make a golden calf, deity. And you take the glory from my daughters and you shift it over to something that does, that eats grass. To an animal that eats grass. And you you take my glory off of my daughters. Then fine, you can have the law that you want. Right? And we see that happening with Mount Sinai. But that's also why we get in view the Lord came from Mount Sinai in Psalm 68. We also see her burned as an ash heap there as the dove that will eventually, her wings will be coated in gold and silver once again. The wings are symbolic of heavenly authority. I know they have us running around with these images of human beings with wings on them. Wings from all appearances is a symbol of heavenly authority. And she lost that heavenly authority when they denied her as their head. Yeah. As the, the ruling governance on earth and her law. And they tore her down. They went about gnashing upon her to do that. We see the bulls of Bashan surrounding the doe of the dawn. We do. We see the dogs piercing her hands and her feet. This was the dismembering of the government of God. These daughters, these women, the doe of the dawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Doe, when we get identifying it, it's, it's actually the she-goat, right? Um, so there was some um, dispute, uh, some misunderstanding when you would take words from the east and bring them into the west. Uh, there was some confusion because they would hunt the ibex in uh, the east. Uh, and uh, they were called does, I believe. The female was called the doe. Let me look that up. I might have that wrong. Um, I may. Uh, name of a female goat. Let me see when it's on. Because I looked at that. Yeah, a female goat is called a doe or a nanny. Doe refers to any female that is not rearing young. Nanny is a female goat that is actively rearing young. Uh, Nana, my Nana. Yeah, my Grammy. Doe of the dawn. You'll get her in Psalm 22. And it's no mistake there that it's called the doe of the dawn. That was what she was speaking. The bulls of Bashan, her own men. This was them in the Exodus when the men begin to receive the harlots identified as serpents coming in and biting them, poisoning them with a lying law system, which was Baal, Baalic, Baalim, you see? And the contamination that broke in upon Israel itself was Baal worship, idol worship. And it tells you all through the Old Testament, it's this God that you come back to every time. Baal, Baal, Baal. I will remove Babylon's God, Baal, their king of Babylon, Baal, husband as Lord and God. So in Psalm 22, we get the doe of the dawn, a new day dawning, which is why we get the female, we get the goat, right? In the Genesis 15, 9 covenant being so important, 
we see the same little flock called the the camp of Mahanaim or the camp of God, the presence of God on earth, identified as being with the Shulamite. They're also called she goats there. They're also called the lilies of the covenant. Another name for Israel herself is the lily. She will flourish like the lily. It says, it says he will. <laughs> no, Israel was the woman seed, the women. It was the woman that preserved us. It was not Adam. He accused us. With blood. He's trying to take us out through bloodshed. There's a war going on. Uh, but her sons also sided with her to the point that they wiped us all out. All right. We see men like Gideon fighting this battle against Belbereth and Elbereth, the wicked women, because they divided my pleasant land, my daughters, into two covenant. One that adhered to Baal and played his harlot. And the one that did not. And so we see men like Gideon fighting for the one that did not. She became the outcast that no man sought a covenant with. Uh, we see men like Elisha doing the same, fighting against Baal. Baal, Baal, Baal. And we see that that is why the king of Babylon is took out. Because of the idols that they have um, worshipped and exalted. And Baal is one of them. Uh, Merodach is another, but it leads you straight back to Baal. Man, husband is Lord and God, a king. You didn't want me, God says you wanted a king. You didn't want your sovereign. You wanted a king. And she's saying that not only to the men, but to the women who over time bowed to that idol. So now you have to be washed and your spirit has to be renewed before mother will even consider giving you a new body. To continue on in a battle, all right, that has been going on since our beginning. But this is the verse, Isaiah 65, 10, and we're going to, it's 11 that we're really targeting, but we'll begin reading in 10. Sharon, Isaiah 65, 10, Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, all right? So yeah, she's called uh, the lilies. Yeah, the lilies of the covenant, these she-goats are also referred to. And we get David um, telling you all about this covenant of lilies, this covenant of the she-goats. Um, she is the glory that sits between the cherub. Um, we've looked at all of that. So Sharon will become a pasture for flocks. In the valley of a core, a resting place for herds for my people who seek me. So we actually see the Shulamite being instructed to come and rest her herd by the tents at noonday, right? So you understand, There's it, once you get into the true theology and you find that truth weaved in there, which is your little book sealed up, yeah, um, then it's easy to really start to piece it all together. Um, so verse 11 was the one we wanted here in Isaiah 65.10. And understand it takes us straight back to Proverbs 1, the one that was denied as your creator and your maker in the beginning, which was our mother wisdom. And she tells us this. And Proverbs 1 says, wisdom says, when I called, you couldn't answer me. You couldn't be bothered to listen to anything I had to say. And wisdom reasons. A religious lie with a man as your head and your Lord and God and an idol does not. But you can't be bothered to listen to her. So, pro so verse 11, Isaiah 65. But you who forsake the Lord. Who forgot my holy mountain. Mine. She says, who shall ascend into my holy hill? She with clean hands and a pure heart. You think I'm still not here? <laughs> I'm here. But you who forsake the Lord, who forgot my holy mountain, who set a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny. I will destine you for the sword, and you will all kneel down to be slaughtered. So you can't be bothered to listen to wisdom. She says, I will laugh and I will mock in the day of your calamity. You brought it on your own heads. You built up your own male idol who's coming to his temple as Jesus to rule over you. And it says, oh, he's a good faker. He's a good pretender. But behind the scenes, she says, he tells, it tells you he hates women. And the God of women. You know who the God of women is? My mother. My own head. Uh, it tells us that. 
But who set a table for fortune and filled bowls of mixed wine for destiny? I will destine you for the sword, and you will all kneel down to be slaughtered. Because I called you, I called you, and you did not answer. I spoke, and you did not listen. You did evil in my sight, and you chose that in which I did not delight. You know what you choose? You choose an idol. You choose an idol over the, the truth, over the washing, and over the regeneration. You choose blood. You choose a law built on bloodshed. And you bring all of that bitterness out of that man-made law right back upon your own head when you can't be bothered to listen to wisdom when she calls. She tells us this in Proverbs. Proverbs 1, which leads us to Psalm 2. The daughter that she births and appoints. So Proverbs 1. What does she say? If I can find it. Okay, I hear. Okay, so Proverbs 1, she says this. Wisdom. It's not a he speaking. They want to stick it all. He's the cornerstone. He was not the cornerstone rejected. That's Baal sticking himself in a place that was not his authority. Just like the men are standing around with their hands on their hips as if they give life. They're trying to say through their preachings, they're going to deliver you. They do not deliver children. And the glory who is sitting between the cherubim in, um, where is it? Isaiah 37, it's a double chapter, uh, 2 Kings 19, I believe. She says, the children have come to the birth, and there is not strength to deliver. You want to know why? Because the women forgot that they were the ones responsible for delivering children. Yes. They also wash this body, right? What you dwell in. Your... Um, your clothing is what your new body would be called. Uh, but they washed it in the upper pool with the fuller soap. And then they got when he comes to his temple, who can stand before him and be washed with a fuller soap? He's not the one that washes the body. He was identified as the women in the upper pool. Washing the clothing, which represents your body. And they stopped doing it, and they stopped delivering their children when they began to bow to a male idol in bloodshed. That's what it was. That's why the children have come to the birth, and there is not strength to deliver. And Proverbs 1 says, when I called, when I come, and I reason it out for you through my wise daughters that I choose as my new branch, as my first fruits, that will rule. That's right. Oh, not here right now. See, we're the ones appointed to have a new body because we are being washed. Our spirit is being renewed. We are breaking away from this world's way. We are transforming our minds in the way that we think and look at things. You are not. You're too busy bowed down at the feet of an idol. But Proverbs 1, she says, when I called... Um, if I can find it, see here. Because we've done this chapter multiple times. Um, but she says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? Will you love your lies? Man as God. And the sorcerer delights in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. And boy, don't they. They do not want to listen to the spirit of knowledge. Um, but she says, um, where is it? Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. That takes us to Proverbs 9 and her, um, her daughters that she sends in covenant crying out on the high places. Um, she crieth in the chief places of concourse. Um, in the openings of the gates. They owned the gateways. They did. This is your key of David in view. Uh, in the street she uttereth her voice saying, 
How long, you simple ones, will you love? Well, how long, you stupid ones, will you love stupidity that don't reason? Um, you don't like knowledge. You're just following in the vain traditions of men instead of reasoning truth out. Um, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make known my words unto you. This is wisdom. And the words are identified as your washing. You will wash in my word, she says. So you want to wash the blood off, Isaiah 4, 4. She says, I will wash the blood off of my daughters. There is guilty of bloodshed for building him up and allowing him to write a law that, that does nothing but, is nothing but bloodshed. Um, so because I have called and you refused, you didn't listen. I have stretched out my hand and none regard it. No man regarded me. Oh, I'm just a weak little bat call voice of God. Voice of the daughter speaking for my mother. That's all. That's not important. Just look it up in Wikipedia. The men said it's not important. It's epic when it comes from men. <laughs> it's funny. I think it's really funny. Everything is epic, male. Everything. You little women. And, 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 oh, you, 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 no, never mind. I'm sorry. Um, but she says, I also will laugh at you in the day of your calamity because you couldn't listen to my words. She says, turn at my reproof. Turn when my daughter rebukes you and sets in order the case and tells you you're wrong. You got it all screwed up. You got man as woman's head. No, no, that ain't God's law. I sent my daughter in oath to teach you the law of heaven, and you, mankind, turned on that. You've been set out for a court case. I'm waiting for my daughters to actually open their mouth and tell me the truth. What is actually going on down there? Tell me the truth. Tell me as a witness, what do you see going on in the law system right now? If it is not man again, organizing through sickness to try to attack the woman and take her out once again and put himself in charge. Because oh, yeah. he's epic. Not this time. We see her, although they got he again, in Second Ezra, which is part of the Apocrypha, chapter 13. She that the God has reserved for the end. That's the daughter of the voice. These daughters that are choosing to listen to their mother once again, wisdom. She chooses us out of the waters of this creation here. And you know what? It says they will all come around against her from every nation. You know what? She says she opens her mouth and she burns them with fire. You know what that fire is? It's like it's, they're shocked at the truth. They can't believe that that's the truth of God. It's the truth. Oh, we're the truth. We're epic. Look at our muscles. Got nothing to do with the spirit of God being really powerful. Just because she holds back her power off her daughter, don't mean to say they don't have power. They do. And the only way you're going to be rebirthed and have a new body will be through your mother. But that will be after the washing and the regeneration and the, the reformation of the way or transformation of your mind in the way that you think. But that fortune of truth, uh, the, the bowl that is set with wine. Um, I'm going to go in here. So that's in Isaiah 65. I should have done this to begin with. And we'll parallel this chapter here. And we go down, I believe it was what, verse 10? Yeah, verse 10. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks in the valley of a core place for the herds to lie down in for my people that have sought me. So I had a dream, I believe, of this valley, this valley of a core. And um, it was in the dream of 2004 that I had. And it was this, this vine of lilies that went on and on and on and on forever. And I was this little um, 10, 11, 12-year-old little girl. 
uh, I was very dark, very dark, almost black looking. And there was a great big ocean of absolute pure water. And it was my job to water um, this uh, vine of lilies. Anyway, I described that. Um, and But off to one side was this stretch of a valley um, between this garden that I was in with Moses, I believe. Um, and across that stretch of desert where it had been watered, this desert was wet. And you could see all kinds of of footprints. And I had said it had been um, watered with the tears of the saints, the tears of the holy ones, the holy daughters. And I believe now that that was the valley of Accor that I was bearing witness to. It was a desert land, but it had been watered with the tears of the holy ones. And across it was this huge mountain in view. And now I believe that that is the mountain of God that I was seeing. Um, and it says, who shall ascend into my holy hill? She with clean hands and a pure heart. The only one we could find in scriptures with clean hand and pure heart was the Shulamite. Now, I'm not saying I'm the Shulamite. I'm saying that I had this dream and God was showing me all these things in allegory way back in 2004. It was not until 2010, 11, 12 that I really began to study this in earnest. And then God gave me the vision will speak at the end and you will understand it, I think. And I have. I have begun to truly understand it to a degree and depth that I never thought that I would. But the valley of Accor, when you look up the word Accor, it means a valley of disturbance, of great distress. So it's showing the battle that we have ahead of us or it's behind us, going to be behind us, whatever. Um, but we reach a plateau here is what it's showing us. We do reach this place of protection and of truth by the Spirit. Now, God said to me in that dream, shouldn't you be about your work? And my job was to water the lilies. That was my job. Um, so there was more to it than that. But that was why I began to look at the lily. And then it was linked to the she-goat. So I began to look at the she-goat. And it went on and on and on. And I began to realize so many things that I hadn't before. And so God, I think, in that dream now was showing me the valley of Accor and that there is a great disturbance coming that we're going to have to battle our way through. But it's to get to that mountain on the other side, and that's her holy hill. She says, who shall ascend into my holy hill? She, with clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted her soul up to vanities. You know what the word for vanity says there? Male idol. A male idol right? That's how you reach God, our mother's holy hill. But ye are they that forsook the Lord and have forgotten my holy mountain, the house in the forest of Lebanon, where the government of God met, where the upper pool was situated, and Solomon saw fit to tear that all down and bring it down to that dirty old lower pool. Yes, we, we identified that in um, Isaiah 22, where the key of David is found. Yeah, he changed. He changed the pool, it says. And we know that to be King Solomon because of Ezekiel 28. Anyway, but ye are they that forsook the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Well, we also, I also discovered, we found them actually um, offering up bloodshed. A, a blood in a cup as their libation as opposed to the water because they murdered the wise women in Lamentations, where was it, 4-1? And we know it was the men doing it because it, the men are identified as the sons of God there, which would have been these wise women's children. And they were murdering the wise women so that they could take the next generation of young girls, which we see Mordecai linked to Esther, he was teaching, the they were teaching the next generation of young girls who no longer had women of wisdom to show them the right way to do, which was not to bow to a man. But we see Mordecai teaching his little Esther to bow to a king in submission. Yes, see, and his name Mordecai leads you straight back to the golden calf idol, which is Baal, your husband, as Lord and God. Yeah, it's the same, it's a name for the same thing. And and you can look at that yourself or not, but that's exactly what we discovered. It exactly goes by the, that name, Baal. And that was the meaning of Mordecai's name. 
he was part of these sons from all indication that had murdered these wise women did not want them in covenant, teaching the laws of God so that they could take possession of the next generation of daughters and teach them how to bow to a man. Which is would be why God goes silent in the book of Esther. And then the king makes a decree. All wives will bow to their, guess what the word is there? Baal. Go look it up in Hebrew. To their husband. From the highest to the least. And then they say, he that is least in the kingdom will be greatest. Ah, there's a whole nother level beneath he that is least in the kingdom. It's she that is least in the kingdom. Um, but they forget that. The, the women, that back home. Nah, nah. It's big when it comes from a man. Um, but ye are they that forsook the Lord. Therefore will I number you to the sword. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer me. Who's that wisdom? When I spake, ye did not hear. But you did evil before mine eyes, and you did choose that wherein I delighted not, an idol. You bowed to your husband as if he was Lord and God. Men are bowing to man, the abomination of desolation. A man inside of a man. You, my daughter, will be a desolate spirit. He's too busy building his own laws up, and you're helping him. You're doing it. Um, so, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. And behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you will be ashamed. Playing a harlot, bowed down at man's feet, like he's Lord and God. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So we get them setting the table for fortune here. It, it is verse uh, 11. In the King James, they render it slightly different. So they prepare a table for that troop. When we go in, it's Gad. So it is an army. And it is an army against her that is being stacked. And, and for fortune, uh, they're stealing her goods under the law. Um, I, I had more on it than that, but I know I've, I've, I've talked too long. So we're going to go in right quick here just before we're done. We're actually going to look at the words in Titus 3, 5. I'm just going to pull these up and look at them right quick. The ones that we really need to. Renewing. So you you are transformed through the renewing of your mind, the, regen, the through washing and regeneration. So it's 342 and it's feminine. It's a feminine now. Renewing. A renewal or change of heart and life. You are not to be found bowing to man. And that's what you're doing. You, re you, turn, you forgot your creator, your mother, in the days of your youth, who is your head, that you were to be hearkening to. And she was not about to teach you to bow to a man. That does nothing but make you a harlot. You are defiled in cohabitation according to this marriage covenant that you are currently in. And we're talking Christianity where the woman believes that man is her head and he, she must do whatever he says. We're told that he has the harlot spirit exalted in there. Babylon says, queen of the kingdom. Yep, she's the queen right now. Because man's got the harlot exalted in there so he can play God. Bell is the head at the top there who thinks he's never going to be touched. Because she's got him exalted. Um, but we see her in Isaiah 47 saying, no one sees me. <laughs> I'm hid from view. You can't see her. Um, I will never be widowless. I will never be childless. <laughs> Not as long as these women believe man's God. And, well, he's her head, so he's going to teach her how to play his harlot. That's the covenant to be disannulled. And they say, oh, but when the overflowing scourge comes in, the ones that's going to judge this world, they won't touch us. They can't touch us because they got no witnesses to witness against us and what we did. They can't see what we did in the beginning. And yet God calls the one out of the earth in Isaiah 63, I think it is. The spirit that came to make a name for herself. She placed her spirit on Moses. She calls her out. She says, who can tell me what happened from beginning to end? That is the daughter Zion in Isaiah 50 uh, or Psalm 50. I always get that wrong. Psalm 50, ordering the case in Proverbs aright. 
And it is about the controversy of Zion. God says, you split my pleasant land. You divided my daughters into two covenants. A harlot that bowed to you, and you denied my rightful rulers, the righteous spirit that gave you the law of heaven. You denied that. Now, where is she that came to do this on my behalf? I'm calling her out, and I'm asking her to witness what's going on down there. Now, you can change it before my witnesses come forth. Or you can leave it the way it is and suffer the judgment. Uh, but with the womb of Sheol, with the women who are delivering our children into death, teaching our religious lies, man, as God, he's her head. Are we at agreement? We're at full agreement. There's no way she can see what we did from beginning to end. We hid when we did it. We hid under a refuge of lies. We've hid ourselves under an idol. You can't figure it out. Well, number one, they don't think you're smart enough. And number two, they have fell into their own snares. Yeah. It says the snare they have laid for the witnesses, for the daughter of Zion to fall into. They have fallen into it, and they do not escape it. They can't let it go. It's like honey on their tongue. Oh, it tickles their ears. <laughs> That's what it did. When these women from the surrounding Adamic nations like serpent come in and bit the men inside the nation of Israel with this lying theology that man was God and wrote the law, it was not his. And God says to them, if you look to this scepter, with this serpent, which was a symbol of the wise women, their own right hand. If you look to her and the way that she rules, you will live. As it is, we're currently still dying. It says the kings are trapped in the womb of Sheol. They can't get out. Why now do I see every man standing around as if he can deliver life? They fell into their own snare. You see, they're trapped in the womb of Sheol. And they cannot get out. It's only those of us who will renew a renewal or change of heart in life that will be gave a new body. So you're completing a process, new, a new development, a renewal, achieved by God's power, God's spirit. It's achieved by God's spirit. So that's the renewing. And then if we go to regeneration, it's 3824. Yeah, regeneration, renewal, noun, feminine, a new birth. Oh, but he did it. He's birthing you out. A new birth, regeneration, renewal. Yeah, a, a new beginning. The dough of the dawn that they're currently trying to circle. Um, she appeared in the beginning. It says she'll appear in the end. So I think it's uh, a sign. Um, that this time, uh, the sword that comes out of her mouth as she's drawn out of the waters takes out all of that great army that's come to try to take her down. Um, she's the lamp of God. Um, that's your Western candle in the middle. Uh, it's these daughters that'll light the way of truth. They're your lamp. Um, they will divide the admixture, the Red Sea. They will take you out of the land of idolatry, out of the land of Egypt. Um, and they will restore life back to you. They will. Um, these are your wise, this is your wise scepter in the way that God chose to rule. Um, so the restoration of a thing to its pristine state, its renovation, um, that signal and glorious change of all things in the new age or world. A rebirth, spiritual. Um, the state or the act. Figuratively, spiritual renovation. Uh, specifically, messianic. That's the sovereign, she, the spirit that rules the kingdom. Washing. Let's look this word up. Washing. Through washing. 3067. You think it says blood? Think it says blood, washing blood? No, it says water. Bath of water. <laughs> water. For washing. It does not say blood. Well, look at that. Who would have thunk it? 
Who would have thunk that you wash in water and not blood? Oh my gosh. Properly a bath, public or private, both were very common in the New Testament times. Baptism. It means you've washed the blood off of you. That lying covenant, right? When the sword of God parts the admixture and finally takes you into the way of truth. According to it, though, many are called, few are chosen. And the few that gets chose is the ones who decide to open their ears and listen and open their eyes and look and see um, and allow our mother to teach us all things. And again, we'll go right back here to this verse. What does it say? How are you gave a new body? Good. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, except you be born again, washed, washed in water, change the way that you think, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So that says, be born. Well, you're not born of a man. You are born of the woman who represents the spirit. Get it? Um, that you might be sanctified and cleansed it with the washing of water by the word, her word. She says, when I come, you can't be bothered to listen to the back coal. Yeah, to the voice of the daughter who represents mother wisdom, her mother. She's my head, not you, not a man who exalts a harlot. No, you're not my head. Otherwise, I'd have a male head sitting on this female, but I do not. <laughs> um. Does that, where is it? So create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And Romans 12, to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Um, I can't find it. Where is it? Yeah, it says you can't, yeah, truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of water and of the spirit. Water, not blood. You're not going to see the kingdom of heaven without being washed in the water of the Holy One and rebirthed by her. She's the only one who gives life. What is, children have come to the birth and there is not strength to deliver. Who delivers children? Oh, wait, it's the men. Why now do I see every man standing around with his hands on his hips as if he can give life? It's the Holy Spirit represented by the women that delivers children into life, not man, not blood. That's the lying covenant of Baal, of the harlot. Um, so sorry, I babble. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, where is it? There I am. Uh, uh, it's a long video. I apologize. I, I, I wanted it more thorough than that. And uh, when I was, I was kind of looking at it and kind of rehearsing it in my mind. And it, it always sounds better <laughs> than what it actually turns out. So anyway, um, I thank you for watching. I pray the Lord blesses you with an abundance of truth. Um, I'm quite excited about the wisdom study to begin that in January. Um, good times ahead for those who wants to hear wisdom, the spirit. Um, so thanks again. And uh, may you be blessed with abundance of the truth. And I hope you all have a lovely day.